All right, KMR, we're at the shop. We're running the lapping table, and uh, I thought this was a very interesting housing. 12A large street port. It actually has CNC porting, and uh, unfortunately, the race car that this was in had an oiling issue. Looks like they uh, burned, scored the side plate. And because this is a rare side plate with some expensive porting on it, this is one of those housings that I think really uh, lends itself to lapping. To start over, you would have to find a new or good condition 12A housing. Um, it would then have to be CNC ported. It's also had some hand porting done. Um, I think in this case, albeit a lot of people always have concern about uh, removing any of that original nitrided face, for years, uh, lapping has been one of the leading processes to resurfacing side plates, side housings for rotary engines. And especially in the case where there's been damage um, to a unique component, um, it, I really find that it's often a lot better than just starting over from scratch right away. And uh, whether it's high mileage, whether it's damage, whether you're just trying to clean the surface up, you can see there's actually a little bit of wear here if I catch the light just right. And that can cause leak down when your oil seals are sitting here when the engine's parked. Um, whether you're just trying to do cleanup to get an old plate back to a flat surface, reconditioned like new, or you're trying to bring back a housing that maybe got damaged, a side plate that got damaged, resurfacing, lapping can be extremely valuable, extremely applicable. Um, and personally, just like piston motors, I wouldn't do a proper rebuild or wouldn't consider it a proper rebuild if either parts weren't replaced or lapped, because especially in this case, you could not put that back in there. Now, there's always the possibility that there's a, this burn has a, gone too much and there's shrinkage, uh, metal conditioning problems, um, or even cracking. So when we lap a component that's had damage like this, we're very careful. We're looking at it. Um, we've even sent housings out for crack checking um, to make sure there hadn't been any damage that we couldn't see. So all of those things are options. We can even then send this back out for WPC treatment if we wanted to re-harden the surface. But I think in this case, um, we're only going to have to cut off about a thou, thou and a half. We should still have some of that factory nitriding, debatably. And uh, I believe this customer will be able to save this housing. He'll get back out there. He can have happy rotary days again, and he doesn't have to start from scratch. So I think, uh, you know, in the world of debate about lapping, I always like to bring up that there are a lot of reasons that lapping can be a very, very beneficial and good thing in the rotary world. It doesn't mean you have to lap every component, but uh, if it's got a lot of wear, if it's something you're into like me, if you like things to be fresh, you got some damage you got to get rid of, uh, it just needs to be checked out. And uh, we'll show a little more of this here before the video's over. We'll see how it cleans up. Um, you know, you win some, you lose some. Hopefully that isn't too bad because that would be a shame. I'm hoping this is a cool video. We'll see how it goes. RX-8 played over here. Things are cleaning up. We're going to go lap the Brat Bap. All right, we're underway. Spins around, spinny round. I can run four plates, but uh, right now I'm only running two. I've got that RX-8 center plate that I just flashed a minute ago, and then we've got our 12A plate spinning around, around right here. We run a, a very fine uh, polishing slurry, so I cut pretty slow. Um, can take probably way longer than a lot of other places. I can run a plate for a few hours and only get about a half bow off, but I really like the fine finish, and I don't like going back and forth on slurries. Always make sure they're spinning, always make sure it's clean. We're going to come back, check on this thing in like uh, half an hour or so. All right, so after about 30 minutes, uh, we were able to cut off just about a half a thousandth, and uh, we stopped lapping to take a look, because it's always really interesting to see how things are cleaning up. And uh, you can see the damage actually isn't as bad as I thought it was. Those burn marks seem to be going away fairly easily. 
and probably about another 30 minutes total of about one thousandths of material taken off and we'll probably have most of that burning removed. Uh, surprisingly though we did get some rotor contact here this is probably the rotor gear um, or part of the rotor land as the rotor laid over due to whatever uh, failure this engine had and then we still have some uh, cross wear right here uh, that we're getting rid of they would both affect a side seal, corner seal, oil control ring, sealability. And we've also got some water O-ring kind of uh, wear, porosity. So even though this was a pretty nice housing that had an unfortunate occurrence, I think there were a lot of reasons and within a very small amount of material removed, we're gonna have this housing back into very usable, uh, refurbished shape. So again, why I like lapping, um, and I think in a lot of cases where people have failures with motors, uh, whether they're new, used, lapped, or anything like that, it really comes down to the assembly, um, proper specs, because obviously this motor failed and it had nothing to do with lapping, and now we're using lapping to fix the motor. So take that, internet. All right, we're going to get this back on the table. It's going to go spinny round, um, lapping for the brapping, and we'll see how it comes out. Probably another 30 minutes. RX-8 housing still going around. Looking good. All right, so we've had the housing on the table for about an hour, hour and a half, um, and we've cut just over one thousandth of an inch off. Um, the housing's actually coming out really nice. I still want to remove a little more of this wear over here as the seals pass and this little bit of a hit mark from the rotor land and this little bit of wear that if you get up close you can see you have some chamfering here on this ported edge that is not intentional. That's wear from the side seal um, generally when these get pushed out pretty far. So just some aggressive porting. So just a little bit more work. Most of the burning rotor scuffing has been cleaned up. We're down to the last little bit, probably less than a half of a thousandths, and we'll have this removed. So estimation of total run time, probably around two hours. So we'll get it back on there, spin it around, and check it again later. I pulled up the RX-8 housing just to take a look. These always need a lot of cutting. They have a tendency to wear. For whatever reason, the cast iron doesn't seem as hard or the nitriding isn't as deep. I still recommend lapping RX-8s. My personal street car is lapped. I've lapped a lot of them. Great success with them, but uh, they do have a tendency to wear faster than the traditional 12A and 13D housings, um, mile to mile. And it seems like the nitriding just isn't as thick on these housings, so it's kind of a double whammy. And then uh, you can see right here, this is pretty much common in all uh, Renesis motors. You get shrinkage around your exhaust port, and quite often this shrinkage, if it gets hot, continues all the way across right here, and this is often where the water seals or rotor housing to water seal fails in Renesis motors. So good to clean the wear up, good to flatten out the housing for sealing. And uh, back to the main project at hand, this Race 12A housing, coming out flat, nice and shiny. We just have a little bit more work to do. Okay, I think we've wrapped up lapping on this 12A ported race front. Definitely took longer than I expected. Uh, probably closer to three hours, three and a half hours, and we had to cut off closer to two thousandths of an inch. Um, than I really wanted to, but I think it's always worth making sure that the housing is in good condition, flattened out, cleaned up, and ready to continue on with its life, especially if somebody's paying to bring a important housing uh, back. So we knew we had the material, our total thickness was fine. Um, regarding nitriding, I always try to cut off the minimal amount possible, and if you look Right here, that's actually just a very small amount of wear that still remains. Um, it's so microscopic, I'm going to leave it, but that's just kind of what I aim for. I never want to cut off more than I need to. And in this case, we were able to remove all of our burn marks. The housing looks fine. There's no cracking. There's no scarring, no heat marks. Completely 
uh, back to usable condition. The total flatness is back to OEM specs. Our total thickness is perfectly fine within all OEM specs. And as far as our water O-ring seals, um, there is a little bit of pock marks. You know, this is an older housing, um, so it does have a little bit of porosity, but there's plenty of sealable material for the metal to metal seal and that O-ring to ride on. So this housing's uh, going in the Sonic tank next. Uh, maybe we can do a video on proper cleaning, but uh, I wanted to call this one a wrap. We're gonna wrap it up and wrap on out. That's what lapping is about taking old rotary parts and making them not only usable, but the best form of usable that they can be. Because you're probably not just going to run out and find a 12A front iron with a matching CNC porting easily. And we were able to bring this back to reasonable specs. So there you are, KMR, Lapping, Mazda Tricks. If anybody needs the service, available on the websites. We do some rotary machine work, and uh, it's still a little wet. Lots of cleaning required. But it's nice. Gave it a quick wipe off so you can see. Nice and flat, shiny. No damage anymore. Brought that one back to life. KMR, let us know what you need lapped. Lots of cleaning required.